that we're at Coffs Harbour at the Native Title Conference. So, yeah, it's been good coming back down into this country too. We're here all for one thing, and that's to get our land and make sure it's um, uh, where we could work on it to um, have uh, self-determination. You know, and that's the one thing uh, I think everybody is here for. And uh, I think it's going ahead with uh, uh, native title. And, but the, the way I feel and the way I see now is what um, uh, everybody is in the same boat and looking for that one particular thing and that, that is to um, ratify all the wrong wrongs and to get our land and um, work on those land and be self-sufficient and uh, maintain our cultural ways and um, like before, you know. Well, I've been coming to a number of these things for the last few years now, Lee, and uh, you know, you see the same faces and, and meet, the, you know, the same people and that. And a lot of times the same topics are being discussed again, you know. And uh, so it's it's good to network again and see where things are at with different issues that are raised each year. And you can sort of keep a bit of a track on how things are progressing. Um, so that's that's good in the networking and that, but um, you know you sometimes uh, you sometimes uh, wonder sometimes whether we whether we're making traction or whether we're getting in, getting anywhere and that. And uh, I think a lot of times the, the messages and the issues are the same. We just it's just a change of leadership and a change of faces that take it forward sometimes. But but uh, and of course having said that, there's the old faces that they're always there and that. And but I think it's it's a very important gathering of people. Um, you do get a sense of where we where we're going. When I come by, I'm, you know, there's a few interesting things on the agenda. The latest to what people is all about idea exchange. You know, some people just starting PBCs or things. Um, there's others who are a lot more advanced. And for someone like me, it's about taking all of the best of the ideas, throwing the, the rubbish aside, and seeing what I can apply back home for my own mob. I think. Um, it's important to have this once a year. But, um, mainly for me is, is to catch up with a lot of countrymen, do a lot of networking, and and take some of the best ideas I hear here and put it in my own little way how we can apply back home. Uh, for this four days, it's it's um, it's given me that lift that I was looking for in coming down here. Well, it uh, that lift was came from First Nation and hearing about First Nation. Um, and having that uh, uh, other people around me that we're all talking in, in the same way and um, wanting that really badly and to form that uh, 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 group together with all the people, you know, the Indigenous people, all the clan groups together and making that happen. So... Um, that's, that's, it's sort of, I got so excited yesterday that I couldn't wait to come back today and to hear about more details on, on the First Nation and Seven States, you know, and um, it's, it's given me confidence now, you know, to go back home and, and, um, let people, let my people know about this thing and to find out more about this thing. And I think it's, it's the way that uh, we really need to go. Well, last year out of frustration, a group of people, about 100 people, uh, sat around and said, we need a new direction. Um, you know, the Congress was struggling back then. Uh, as we know, this year, 2014, their money's been cut. Uh, and similar things have happened in the past. The NAC, ATSIC, um, now the Congress, anything government funded is doomed to be 
dismantled by government when it suits. So one of the fundamental things that we've said, and we've had models in the past like Federation of Land Councils, National Coalition of uh, Organisations, uh, you know, Nacho, etc. And we didn't take government money and they're still existing, even though Nacho now is, uh, was Vacho back then, is now taking money uh, and, and closing the gap, which is, is a good thing. But when you start to do things politically, you start to threaten this government and therefore they, they withdraw your money. So the First Nations Assembly is a lot similar to the Federation of Land Councils where people in authority from their own territory with a mandate comes along to a central point, to a forum and exercise their voice, their vote about what it is that's best for blackfellas. And um, this week we've uh, now drawn up a charter and that charter will start to determine uh, via the principles what principles we live by. Now, there are some things about the First Nation that need to be debated, uh, about, you know, who's a member, um, what functions you may have. Uh, membership is always difficult. Uh, when you use the terminology nations, are we talking sovereign nations? Are we talking about a collective of Aboriginal people in a certain territory who may describe themselves differently? Uh, and, you know, there's lots of names like, you know, the uh, Kalkadoon or the Gundich Mara or the Noongar Nation, etc. Et but we generally know what we're talking about. We generally want representation at a national level, an Aboriginal voice. We want a black voice. We also require an agenda. Now, there's Aboriginal land and estates spread right across this country. In order to have the sovereign argument advanced, we need to have a destination and an agenda to get there. What's also been proposed at this meeting is a seventh state, an Aboriginal state. Now that's going to create enormous uh, workload, enormous thinking uh, with lots of issues and a lot of those issues came over here. People were doubting it, ah oh, it's like the Israeli state, it's like this, it's uh, apartheid, etc. We'd have to make, take all of this criticism into consideration uh, what also was put here was, you know, Michael Anders' concept of uh, some sort of territorial integrity, some sort of uh, separate uh, nation within the nation, if you like. Uh, so there's a sovereignty movement, there's a sort of the treaty movement, there's a reconciliation movement. What we've generally agreed here is that we have to go hand in glove down the same road. We've wasted a lot of energy, a lot of time criticising each other's movements and ideology. End of the day, the destination is that black people are in control of their own lives, in control of their territory, and we're politically free. So we progress to a point now where, you know, the success of Mabo tipped the tables, you know, turned things around. And so we got that land rights that we were after, that we were always talking about. Now the position is, okay, what goes with land rights? If we have land, then we certainly have sovereign rights because we were governing ourselves under a system of law. And that's what the court found, that's what the court ruled in Mabo, that we have our own law and custom, and that's what gives us title. So if we had our own law and custom, then that's a sovereign right. That's a, you know, we were governing. We, we were governing of sovereign, independent peoples. And so what we need to do now is to explore that whole question of sovereignty. And, um, and I think we've nailed it. I think we've, we've pinned it. Now it's a question of how do we, us, we don't have to ask anyone for sovereignty. It's a matter of asserting it, how we assert it, that's the big question. I think what we need to do is go back to our own mobs. We, we cannot do it as a, as a homogenous people around this country. You know, we can't say, you know, that a seventh state will do it because, you know, a lot of people are not going to give their land up, you know, to become part of a seventh state where it may be that that seventh state or the governance of that seventh state tell us what to do on our country. Um, that's my only fear. So if they develop, they, they need to put up a constitutional model of how that's going to function, how it's going to work. Um, the idea is fantastic. You know, there's, there's no question about that. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, the, uh, the ideology behind it. Um, what I'm talking about is the mechanisms, how it works, you know, the fundamental working, m the machinery, what makes it work, how does it make it work? without interfering with the sovereign rights of others to make their own decision on their own land, to negotiate they want to. How will decisions of that body that they may want to govern it, how will that impact on the people whose country that joined that seventh state? That's, that's the question. So 
there, there are all those hypotheticals that, you know, and, and unanswered questions that have to be addressed and looked at so that we can fundamentally deal with that. Again, I think there's got, there's got to be a lot of political will to make this thing happen. Uh, I think that's one of the most uh, fundamental um, ingredients of making this thing a success. The other is, of uh, course, um, uh, uh, well, hopefully with that political will come finances or whatever, but and but the other thing mostly important here is, is our people, we, we're going to have to work our butts off to make it happen, you know, and, and you're going to have to really get uh, some sort of understanding or an alliance amongst ourselves first, you know, and uh, and appreciate each other's views and aspirations. And, you know, it's hard and very difficult sometimes to, to um, juggle the politics and the household budget in your own house. We're talking about something on a massive scale here, you know, something on a, on a pretty big scale that uh, uh, in a lot of ways it hasn't been done before. You know, we've, we've had ATSIC, we've got the Congress now, and uh, you know, in some ways I suppose this is a bit, a bit like that, I suppose. But uh, one of the differences is this is a, there's this groundswell at, at that really grassroots level for this to happen. I think um, Congress never really got off the ground. I think we've spoken about sovereignty for a long time and it's about time we put it into practice. And hopefully over the next 12 months, the stuff they've done here to create that will, will, will take place. And um, with a lot of PBCs and a lot of tribal groups, despite you know little arguments here or there, they're all starting to form and, and, and starting to get substance to each region and each, each little group. So there's, uh, in the past, you know, all that work would have to be done. Thanks to Native Title, most of it's done. We can tell how many tribes there are and who the, who the leaders are or who the different people are from there. So um, I think it's a natural progression that we try to start the National Assembly any earlier without that stuff having been formed on the ground. It wouldn't have worked. But now it's perfect time, and I think. Um, like I said, we've got, we've got a few ideas um, from different mobs, especially in WA mob, they, they're advanced in some ways. Just um, things their PVCs are doing, particularly every PVC has a problem with income, because the federal government, I think it's deliberate that they only fund 50,000 to every PBC because they want to keep them in a weak position so they're not able to exploit the, the opportunities out there now that they have native title. So um, alternative incomes is the main thing we're looking at, you know, um, and some PBCs have some really bloody unorthodox, out, thinking out of the box ideas that, that are producing um, incomes for them. And so that's some of the stuff uh, we're going to take from here back home. We need to be liberated economically from the purse strings. You take out the Aboriginal industry, which is, you know, estimated between 20 billion to 70 billion. You take out that industry, more white people will suffer than black people. Aboriginal people uh, uh, have piggybacked in some ways on the back of the sort of the lefty movement or the or the conservatives or the right. You see what's happening in the territory of Alison Anderson and these people, you know, they're jumping from party to party, party politics, you know, we've been manipulated. At some point, we will have to have uh, an Aboriginal representative in Parliament. That's the political reality. Under an Aboriginal seventh state, you could have from one to 12 senators uh, nominated by the federal, you know, and agreements with the, with the Commonwealth Government that you will become a sovereign state, part of the Federation. Now, there's always been this fear about uh, Aboriginal people wanting to be different and uh, wanting to be, you know, sovereign in their own right and, and separate to the rest of Australia. Well, what we're talking about this time round is an inclusive state. It will be black people, white people. Uh, black people will have control, of course. Black people will you would assume under this uh, proposal have uh, customary law. Uh, the customary law will, elements would be legislated. It'd be written into our constitution. Uh, we would have, when people come onto mine, rather than, uh, rather than just drive the trucks and having the sort of the, you know, the, the, the trainee programs, we would be owning the mines. We would be owning the farms because, you know, there's a, there's a world f uh, uh, food crisis, uh, uh, you know, it, Aboriginal land would be a bankable document because it would be run by an Aboriginal state with all the certainties, with all the uh, protections of our, uh, our cultural values, our environmental values. But the political reality is if we don't have a strong economic and a strong powerful Aboriginal uh, political voice, there's no future for Aboriginal people. So all those issues have been thrown around here this week. Uh, 
and they're new ideas. Some are old ideas rehashed. And I've got to say, and as you've seen that uh, yesterday, you know, a couple hundred people stepped out of the official uh, forum and wanted to sit around because they're so frustrated uh, about how this native title debate is dividing them uh, and how unscrupulous people are uh, losing their sense of collective sharing and, and values. Like, you know, families are fighting families, including my own, um, about resources mainly. So, you know, there's also a task, I think, an immediate task as to how we uh, mediate, how do we get, a, you know, a groups of Aboriginal people to assert our own authority in our own communities. Now, unless we start taking control of these things, uh, no one's going to want to invest. No white uh, organisation or mining company or Chinese mining company, etc., will want to invest in a situation which is, looks, looks like turmoil, uh, without the certainty of certain uh, protections of, you know, regulations and, and, and authority. So there's a lot of the good discussion going on here this week. Uh, it's very encouraging from an old campaigner. Uh, it's given us a little bit of lease of life and, uh, you know, we still hear the, the, the problems coming through, but we're also seeing some very good solutions being uh, uh, identified in some of the workshops here. So it's been, a, you know, a, a very good productive uh, two or three days. Uh, and it's great to see, you know, a mix of uh, um, the old radicals, if you like, the old conservatives with the new radicals and the new conservatives. What I've learned here in this session is stories about people, the problems and the problems they face. The problems they face is with the federal government and each state government and legislations. Let me say this. This is nothing new, right? Native title to me is not extinguished. Native title has always been here. It's been here for 40,000 years. Now to your viewers here, a generation is 25. And what I am, I'm with anybody with DNA bloodlines of the First Nations people, I'm a million generations. Current Australians that call this place home, you are about eight or nine Australian generations. But the thing is what we want and what I want to get out of a lot of stuff here is prior recognition that this country belongs and still does in law to the First Nations descendants. Somewhere in this madness, we have to have the Australian people, I know there's 23 million of us, you people need to stop having a guilt complex. We're not kicking you out of the country, we just want prior recognition in the preamble and the constitution. I'm not fauna or flora, nor is anybody else. My ancestry is, is one of the oldest in the world, and it's alive and well. What is needed also is the rewriting of the curriculum in education, which that encompasses the history of colonisation. There's nothing to be guilty of, it's just rewrite it. Because what it's based on is based on bullshit. Okay, lies, which has kept two countries in denial, England and Australia. Let's get things right for the rest of our generations to come. I, I think there needs to be a um a sea change in terms of how we describe what our issues are. I think it's been a little bit too much in the sorry space, and I think Pilger probably dra drags on that. It is a very emotive issue. Um, there's no question that we have land. There is, there is high court determinations to say that you have exclusive possession. People don't quite know what that means. You hear people coming to this conference who are asking, or well, can you know, I own that land and those houses are on our land, can we occupy them? Because some authority has told us uh, via their regulations, the Housing Authority, probably with black board members, are saying we can't stay in those places. We have become so weakened by the oppressive nature of what's happened to us that we don't even want to assert ourselves. We are not confident enough to be able to challenge the system anymore, and I think that's where the new fire needs to be, you know. We have this great social media network now that sort of the information can get out to young people, 
but occasionally you've got to get out of the armchair and you've got to be able to turn up to some of these places and voice your opinion and look people in the eye to make the difference. Now, that's how any other revolution in the world, a revolution of the minds required, uh, action, you need to take the steps and we need to have the plan. We've talked about the plan here, the uh, Assembly of First Nations, we've talked about a seventh state, so there is now an agenda. There is no excuse for us looking back, and Pilger does a little bit of that, looking back. You have to look back to learn, but it's the action and the determination that's required.